<laughs> okay, I'm going to roll with it. Early this morning, I woke up to the energy of the moon. And now it's going on 9.30 a.m. So, as I was washing up in the bathroom, the scripture or the words, the word canker worm came to my spirit. Canker worm. So I said I was going to take time today and look up what, what uh, the scripture was regarding the canker worm in the Bible. I sort of already know what it is, but I wanted to have the confirmation in my, you know, in my spirit. I wanted it to be coming from the word, what canker worm, what he was saying about canker worm. So I thought I would do it with you. And also at the end of what scriptures I open up with regarding canker worm, I'm going to also pull a couple of cards because also not only the word canker worm is in my spirit, the words great awakening, awakening is also in my spirit. It's like those words are interchangeably going on in my heart. Canker worm and awakening. Not only awakening, but the great awakening. And the reason, again, after the end of the scriptures, I'm not going to hold you long. After the end of the scriptures, I'm going to also uh, pull a couple of cards from Eckhart Tolle. And the reason I chose Eckhart Tolle is because it says awakening to your life's purpose and I also chose mudras I used to call this mudras I don't know why I always saw an in <laughs> but it's mudras and the reason I chose this one is because it says for awakening the energy body for awakening the energy body and also awakening to your life's purpose a new earth awakening to your life's purpose so right after the scriptures I'm going to do the reading just a couple of cards from each that's all so okay when I looked up the scripture for canker worm the scriptures that were given, the ones that concerning me right now is Joel chapter 1 verse 4. Joel chapter 1 and I'm reading from I'm reading from my Bible. Joel chapter 1 verse 4. He says, "That which the palmer worm have left have the locust eaten and that which the locust have left have the canker worm eaten and that which the canker worm have left have the caterpillar eaten awake ye drunkards and weep and howl all you drinkers of wine because of the new wine for it is cut off from your mouth. Now, what this is telling me right off is that there is something going on in the Great Awakening and there is something going on in the opposite of the Great Awakening. If we're not heeding to the call to wake up to the call that is in each of our hearts our situations are going to get worse and worse and worse N not to literally
literally say you drinkers of wine, which it can be literal, you drunkers being over moderation in the drinking, but to symbolize what God is saying is that there is a new wine coming. You're getting drunk off the old wine. And those days aren't here anymore. God is doing a new thing here on this world, in this world, in the universe, in the galaxies, and also in our hearts and in our bodies and minds. So God is asking us to wake up to the great awakening, to the new wine. Not the old wine. You're, if you're still being drunk off the old wine, off the old way of life, off the old patterns, old habits, old mindsets, nothing involving God, nothing involving your spirit, nothing involving your intuition, righteousness. God is saying, wake up to the new wine. Because if we don't, the locust, the canker worm, and then the caterpillar, things are going to get worse and worse here in this world, in our lives, in, in situations that's surrounding us, your job, your relationships, your finances, things will start dwindling away. God is saying, wake up. And drink the new wine. Get drunk off the new wine. <laughs> okay, now that's the canker worm being activated over here. Because after the canker worm comes the caterpillar. And that, that how low can we go? Because he says... That which the palmer worm, so that may be the beginning of things breaking down in our lives. And then after the palmer worm comes the locust. After the locust comes the canker worm. I don't even know what a canker worm is. Let me see, what is a canker worm? What is a canker worm? Here's the definition of canker worm. The caterpillar of a North American moth that has wingless females. Canker worms consume the buds and leaves of trees and can be a major pest. Canker worms consume the buds and leaves of trees and can be a major pest. So if we look at what is being said, things that you think is about to bloom and blossom and, and bring forth fruit, here come the canker worm. He's going to eat the buds even before it gets a chance to blossom and bloom. False hope. Sabotage. Self-sabotage. For whatever reason, your life isn't blossoming, isn't producing fruitful trees. And the reason is, is because you're not awake to the things, to the flow of the Spirit. There is a new presence in our world, in our spirits, which is awakened. And God is asking, drink of this wine. Don't be drunk off a of life of that old life that you haven't gotten your, your blessings, your fruit, your, your, your green leaves that never wither. It's time to receive the life that God has planned for you. So the canker worm, it eats the buds and the... The, it consumes the buds and the leaves. So it's not even given a chance to prosper. And God is just simply saying, come drink of this wine. 
Now let's find out what the canker worm on the other side will do. Because I know in my spirit God wasn't mentioning the canker worm to say uh, you, it, it, it's going to destroy. Yes, that is the message. But I nephrite. I come spreading words of love, purity, goodness, joy. I come spreading all that's good, lovely, and pure. I don't like coming bringing the opposite of because basically the reason I don't is because you already know I, why I have to waste even my energy describing that stuff. I want to come and spread words that are good, lovely, and pure, that it encourages and inspire and motivate us to stay on track with what God is doing in our life. That's what Naphrite is all about. Okay, let's go back to, um, to Joel. So we hear Joel 124, and that's like God saying, wake up. And remember, I told you the words that was in my spirit was the great awakening and canker worm. And here it is in Joel 1. Four, saying, uh, let's see, where did it say? Awake, that's verse five. Awake, ye drunkards. You drunk off the wrong stuff. God don't say, uh, we, we, we can't drink, but you drunk off the wrong stuff. God got some wine for life for you behind that. Uh, you think you drunk now. You wait till you taste the wine, the sweetness of what God can do and give through you and to you, for you. So let's go to the other side of this, this thing. We hear what God is saying to the, to the ones that needs to wake up. If you don't, things are going to get worse and worse and worse till the caterpillar eat the rest. So now let's go to Joel 2, 25. Okay. Joel 2, 25 says, And I will restore to you the years. Woo. This is the one I knew. I, I had a feeling of what God was saying. This is what I, I know about right here. I used to know about that other one. But no, uh-uh. When I heard God say canker worm, this is where my mind gravitated to. But yes, I had my fair share of the canker worm and every locust and caterpillar eating everything up. Once it gets started, it gets flat back to square one. Ground zero. But God says in Joel 2.25, he says, And I will restore to you the years. And it has been years. I'm 58, will be 59. <laughs> Next month, I will be 59. It has been years of the canker worm on that side. But let's see what's getting in store now. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. God sent that canker worm. God sent the locust. God sent the, 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 the caterpillar. The palmer worm. Nothing can't come to us unless God allow it. It's not that God do it himself. It's that him being who he is. You reap what you sow. God is not a God that he should be mocked or can lie. He'll let you loose. And those are the consequences. He said what he said and meant what he said. If that's the type of life we're sowing, these are the consequences of what we reap. 
worse and worse and worse and worse. God is saying, awake. But here, now God is encouraging us and inspiring us that the years, we know this stuff been going on in our lives for a long time. Don't you think it's time we're ready? He will restore all the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and the palmer worm, he will restore all those years. And ye shall eat in plenty. Your life going to be full, happy. Everything surrounding you is going to be bearing fruit to an overflowing fruit. Good measure, press down, running over. This is no cliche to me. I, I, I know that's what it is. And it will reveal itself in this natural. I'm not waiting till I die. No, I want mine and will have mine here in this natural. And God will restore every year that I thought I was doing right and I wasn't. That I had to learn lessons and I didn't. And I had to do it over and over. But now I'm growing up. I've learned, Father, I see the way. I'm ready to tell others, don't learn from my past. But a lot of us have to learn by going through the experience ourselves. When we don't need a man to teach us, God can teach us without us having to have to keep going through over and over and over the trials and the tribulations and the Failed dreams and visions and the slaps and the beats and the knocks. Hard knocked lives. From the sincerity of our hearts, we tried, we tried, we tried. And God saw all of the trying and he's going to restore every year all that we've learned, that we've been through. That we want it. And we're going to have that and much more. He says he, we will eat in plenty and be satisfied. We, are, we ain't got to settle for nothing and nobody. We don't have to settle. We're worthy. Because God is worthy. We're righteous. Because our spirit and God is righteous. We're love. Because God is love. And we deserve everything that God has for us. I'm looking into the camera when I should be looking somewhere else. Into the red thing. But God will restore everything. That is within. It's going to be shown without to its fullness, to satisfaction guaranteed, to plentiful, to flow over, to, 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 the, to, the, to the relationships, to the community, to, to, to the service of whatever God is calling us to. It's time for the overflowing that it flows to others, to the land, to the world. And praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. We will never be ashamed. And it says that we will know I am that I am. So yes. It's a great awakening happening where God is going to restore all that the canker worm has eaten, all that the locust, the caterpillar. He's going to restore all the years. And I mean, Father, 
It's been years. And God is going to pour it out, overflowing. We're going to get that. We're gonna, we, we have that, but it's, 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 it's being prepared to be shown here in this land. As above, so below. As within, so without. We have it. I know this. And also, the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. If they don't awake to this great awakening, there will be those around us. Even those that are most dear to us. Where we witness the world situations getting worse and worse and worse. But we don't have to be a product of those consequences. Because we are a product of the I am that I am. Of God, the most high universe of love so right quick let's see what the spirit of Eckhart Tolle would like to say and I've already sprayed my um, and also my anointed alignment oil and also my energy cleansing spray and the uh, uh, truth revealing spray, energy attracting love energy spray. If you're interested, it's down in the description below. And I do thank you for the subscribers, for the likes, for the comments. And share so more messages can be spread out from this channel. A channel of love, naff right, high and let loose, yielding, lovely, fine. All oh, that's good, lovely, and pure. That's all I want to spread. I don't want to spread too much of that other stuff because we already lived it. We already know about it, and, and it's time out for it. So naff right's channel, naff right nation, is about all that is good, lovely, and pure. I'm going to pull two from the top. And then I'm going to pull two from the mudras. Again, like the video, share the video, so the um, you know, so it can start showing up more algorithm, and so others may hear the message. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word coming forth to encourage, motivate, and inspire. And also, word of correction and conviction. If that's what you heard, then do that and get on the right track. Thank you, Father. Let's see what the Spirit of Mudra cards has to say. And I'll pull two from the top. Okay, so the first ones on Eckhart Tolle says, I'll read it. It says, the next step in human evolution is not inevitable, but for the first time in the history of our planet, it can be a conscious choice. Who is making that choice? You are. And who are you? Consciousness that has became, become conscious of itself. So what I feel like Ecotoli, the spirit of Ecotoli is saying, know that you are God. Know that you have this great awakening within you. And just be who you are. And be on the this side of receiving the conscious awakening rewards of that awakening. 
Also, the second card says from Eckhart Tolle, he says, the more limited, the more narrowly egoic. Your view of yourself is, the more you see, focus on, the, re the react to the egoic limitations. Let me read that again. The more limited, the more narrowly egoic your view of yourself is. The more you will see, focus on, and react to the egoic limitations. The unconsciousness in others. Their faults or what you perceive as their faults become to you their identity. This means you will see only the ego in them and thus strengthen the ego in yourself. What I'm feeling the spirit of Eckhart Tolle is saying right now, we don't know the reasons people aren't waking up. People can be doing the most the right things, but it may look that way to us, that this person lives right. But you don't know what's going on in their heart, in their spirit, in their home. Things could be tearing down within their bodies, within their minds. So God, the spirit through Ecotoli, God is saying, let us not judge because if we look at things from an egotistical way because we never know what a person is going through or why a person do what they do we can say that person is egotistical but if we're making that judgment it's because we're looking at it through an egotistical view so let us not judge lest we be judged. And if you judge one, then you're judging yourself. Only God can do the judging because things can come as a wolf in sheep clothing. It is not us for us. It's not our part to do the judging on why if we may be witnessing things in people's lives falling apart. Let us not judge their situation because we don't know where God, oh, I keep looking this way when I need to be looking this way. We don't know why God is doing or allowing what is happening in their lives. It is either happening to give them a great awakening or it's happening to get them in alignment or it's happening because they're on the down spiral we don't know reasons of why. So let us stay focused on our life. Let us mind our own business, our own spiritual journey. And let whoever is connected with us, let us all be conscious and aware that we're on the same focus. Okay. Now, Mudra... The blessing of the mudra spirit is getting ready to say determination. Determination. And it's 21. Determination. And what determination is being said through the mudra is saying spiritual discipline, transformation, willpower. Optimized. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. It goes into other stuff. But what Mudra, the spirit of Mudra is saying to me is determination. Stay determined. Because there is, not only are we staying determined and focused so we could just receive the blessings of God. No, we're staying determined and focused because that is who we are. And then the, 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 the icing on the cake is the benefits. We are going to have a lifestyle of blessings, overflowing blessings. Can we believe it? Can we know this? So let us stay determined to stay on the right path. Let nothing or nobody 
cause us to deter, be distracted, or to settle when we're knowing what we need to do. Stay determined. Stay focused. And the other spirit of the mutra is God speaking through us, to, through the cards, is the throat chakra. Let us speak up. Let us speak up. Or let us withhold from speaking. Oh, but let me see what is being said. Meaning purification, communication, expansion, discernment, and again, purification. So let the throat chakra be in sync with what the spirit is doing within your life within your spirit, within your, your surroundings, within your connections. If it's not that, if it's not in your focus of what you know should be, have the purification to pure, have the throat chakra to come through and purify your situation. Have the determination, have the communication, the discernment. Use your discernment. Is it going with the peace and the harmony within your spirit? Or is it causing habit, havoc in your mind, in your body, in your chaos? Then you know what to do. Let your throat, throat chakra speak up, communicate, and purify your situation, your whatever is involved with that, and watch the expansion, the overflow of the great awakening of us staying determined and focused and allow all those years of what the canker worm, the locust, the, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar have eaten up, allow God to restore it. All those years. Woo! So, be blessed. Be encouraged. And again, I'm letting my throat chakra speak. Please like the video. Share the video so the algorithm of this channel can do its service to our world. Ooh, not that way. That way. Have a blessed day.